Facing Waves is brought to you in part by Paddle TV, the premier paddle sports channel on YouTube. Welcome back to Facing Waves. This week, we're in Tlapacoyan, Mexico, exploring the region's heart-stopping whitewater with the Jackson Kayak Pro Team. During their annual trip to the area, the group makes a point to compete in the infamous Al Siseca race. The highest part of the river that we did with the roadside section where the Al Siseca race was based on, and basically it's a really fairly short section, but just great quality whitewater, nothing too demanding, just really fun slides and drop. It's not that difficult, so people can come um, without putting their lives in danger, really. But you get a lot of really, really good waterfalls, a lot of really good rapids, and it's really easy access. It's, it's called the roadside section because the river follows the road. The accessibility of the river and the quality of the white water within the roadside section of the Alsaseca makes it one of the premier extreme races in the world. The event has grown year after year as more and more paddlers plan their winter visit to Mexico to coincide with the race. The opening and closing ceremonies were really cool. They bring in uh, this local priest that kind of blesses everybody and uh, uh, like thanks the river gods and everything for letting us be there. The town really gets involved with it and a lot of the locals and part of the race is to bring awareness um, of the river and the tourism and stuff that that brings and try to reduce pollution and throwing garbage into the rivers and stuff like that. So it's really cool, a combination of kayaking and uh, involving the, the local people and stuff like that and trying to just bring awareness to, to keep the river and area really clean. This year there was actually a great flow on the roadside section where the race course is and um, not only that allow for faster times and uh, smoother sailing because you're going over a lot more rock, but it also made a lot of the drops a lot harder because usually there's a rock that might keep you dry and keep you over the water, but that rock's underwater and you start just falling in a hole. The challenge for this year was really being able to keep your bow dry and really keep your speed up over all the big holes and boil this year. The main challenge of the race course is just how long it is. It's uh, usually a 14 minute race course, but this year we had to stop at S turn and portage around because the river was too high. Uh, so it broke it down a little bit, but it's still just a really long section and then you're just racing two back to back uh, race courses of seven minutes. Right out of the middle of the race, because we can't run the yes turn because it's too high. We have to portage it, so the race ends up there. You walk around, sea launch, and then you start over. So it's kind of nice because you have a break for sure. It's a bit of a different format, which I think I'm loving at least. I'm out of breath, and it's still half the race. I thought it'd be a little bit more relaxing, but it actually turned out to be a little more tiring because you had two five-minute sprints instead of 
pacing yourself through about 14 minutes? The good news is you could race really hard at the top and you get like a three or four minute break to try to catch your breath and then you race the bottom. The bad news is that you don't think to pace yourself as much, so you feel like you're going to throw up after the first section before you start the second one. When you're training, you stop above some of the hard rapids. So the hard part is that usually you get kind of a break when you're practicing and then you're like, okay, really nail this line. So when you're really tired and you're sprinting, you get kind of lazy and you just take kind of half strokes and that's, uh, that's when you can mess up. A lot of great uh, white water in there, really steep rapids really fast competitors, so made for a great race. I think uh, there's a pretty good chance that Dane will come out on top again. EJ and myself and a couple other people that uh, could have been top contenders maybe had a couple little mistakes. We'll still have to go to the awards and see who, uh, who wins. The winner of the long race um, gets a kayak and um, I've managed to win this year, so basically I'm not going to take a kayak that could easily go to someone a little more deserving that because it's so hard to get kayaks down here, you want to give it to someone that would be even more fired up. I passed my kayak down and I gave it to the fastest Mexican in the race. It was really cool because like usually people are like, oh, the, the fast person, the gringo, one is going to take it home and sell it. But in fact, we, we hand it out to someone who needs a kayak because kayaks down here are just so hard to get come by. and. Um, he was super fired up, the Mexicans were super fired up, and they found out they were going to find out who the fastest one was and who was going to win it. Most of North America is frozen up, which is one of the things I really like about the race, is it's kind of in the middle of right when you want to be here creaking anyway. So it's kind of an excuse, like, oh, that's the second race, we got to go, it's super fun. And then let's put some paddling on both ends of it, so let's go run all the fun stuff and race in the middle of it. Coming down for sure for your first time, it's a huge experience. Um, and even coming down for eight years, every time I, there's always something new here for me. So it's, it's an adventure every time I come and uh, because of the adventure is part of the reason why I keep coming back.